What is up creators, Derek here from DW Designs and welcome to my fabrication series. Let's do this thing! What's up guys, welcome back to DW Designs and today we're going to be remaking upper control arms as well as tie rods for this custom sand rail so stay tuned. Alrighty guys, I have everything you're going to need here laid out here on the table. This is going to be the starting process on how everything goes. You're going to need dial calipers, angle finder, a pen, a tape measure, a notepad, and all your parts. The first thing you're going to do is grab your pen and your notepad and draw a rough shape of what it looks like of the upper control arm. Then what you're going to do is you're going to start taking your measurements. So how I did mine is I started from this point here and measured to the very end. Now what that does is that gives me the overall uh, length that I need for the tube um, I call this tube number one um, that goes across here and this is tube number two. But tube number one, um, it's a little bit longer, it sticks through and the other one's notched to fit to the other tube. Now tube number one has bungs on both ends, so keep that in mind. Tube number two does not. So what you're going to do is once you take those measurements, you're going to jot them down. I got 27 and 13 sixteenths for tube number one and 24 and three quarter for tube number two. Now that's not what you're going to cut your tubing length to otherwise it will be too long um, after you put the bungs on so you got to factor in the bungs. So what you do is you take the bungs you're going to be using which is a standard bung here and it's made for a three quarter heim joint and you take your dial calipers which I had here on the table these are made by Brown and Sharp these are a little bit more fancy a little bit more expensive calipers but um, if you guys are on a budget uh, Harbor Freight ones will work just fine it'll get you really close in the ballpark so what you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, dial calipers and your bung and you're going to measure from the tip here to the inside where it just tapers out and what that's going to do is that's going to tell me what my measurement needs to be, which is 438 thousandths, which is um, 7 sixteenths of an inch. And so I take 7 sixteenths of an inch and I subtract that off of each side that gets a bung. So the one that has two bungs on each end, you're going to subtract 7 eighths of an inch. Um, so make sure that you guys get that right, otherwise it will become too short or too long and then you've welded it all up and you got to cut it apart and that's not fun. Now, with the tie rod ends, it's the same thing. Same thing I just explained. Take the overall measurement, subtract the bung, and you have it. Now, these bungs are a little bit different than the other bungs. This is a very important part of the tie rods. Tie rods are not the same thread on both sides. One's left hand thread, one's right hand thread. The reason why is that way you can loosen the jam nuts and twist it in the middle and it'll open or close. So that is why I have one that I dicumed with blue and one that I dicumed with red. Red is left hand thread and blue is right hand thread. It's very important to separate the two. The reason why I did this is because it doesn't say anywhere on them or it doesn't even have a punch or anything to be able to figure out which one's what. So what I did is I took my heim joints and I threaded them in, found which ones were which, marked them with a sharpie really quick, and then I came in and threw dicum on them because it's just really quick and distinct to make sure that I got one blue and one red on each tie rod. Otherwise, I've just screwed up and I have to cut them off and buy new ones and re-weld them back on. And that gets pretty expensive, especially when you're working with chromoly tubing.
All right, guys. So after you got it all cut out, then you're going to put your bungs on the end, and you're going to measure and make sure you got the correct measurements. I have actually got the correct measurements, and I didn't have to cut them at all. So they're perfect, ready to weld. And next step is we're going to go ahead and tack weld them all together. Alrighty guys, this concludes this segment of how to build an upper control arm as well as tie rods for this sand rail. If you guys liked the video, please do me a favor and smash that like button and please uh, subscribe, hit that little bell button if you want to see any future videos that are coming up and until then, you guys take it easy.